G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, some interesting things happening on the charts, but before we get there, I found some interesting stories. So this one was probably the most interesting, but look, all of them are fairly interesting, at least in my opinion. All right, no debate that Bitcoin will increase 20x, says Gold Industry Insider. Dan Tapiero told Anthony Pompliano that 15 trillion in institutional capital could flow into Bitcoin, pushing prices as high as half a million dollars. Now, slow your roll, hold your horses. It's not going to happen tomorrow. It's in the next sort of five years uh, that Dan Tapiero is thinking about. So, Gold Bullion International co founder Dan Tapiero believes that it's only a matter of time before Bitcoin's price surges into the six figure threshold. Speaking to Anthony Pompliano on the Pompcast, Tapiero asserted that in terms of price appreciation, Bitcoin is the king, even though he believes investors should own both gold and Bitcoin. And I tend to agree, I've, I've got both, but I would be putting more money into Bitcoin, but that's my personal opinion, not financial advice. Please don't take it that way. In the next five years, I can see gold at $4,000. So that's double. But if gold is at $4,000, Bitcoin is probably somewhere between 300 and 500,000. So that's a 20 to 30 X. That is a lot. And look, over the next five years, I definitely think that's possible. There are people talking about it could happen this cycle. Uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Time, time will tell on that one. And look, I hope it does. I'm just not sure. We'll have to wait and see, you know, how high the institutional uh, institution will push it. I mean, they've got it up to 20 already. And the real FOMO hasn't started. Again, it's more once Bitcoin hits that trillion dollar mark that, you know, then you'll get even more institutional FOMO. And then again, the retail FOMO on that. Who knows what the prices go to after that? We'll have to wait and see. He went on to add, I don't really think that anyone in the gold world, they are not going to debate that it could go to that. Tapiero believes that institutional investors and finance whales are likely to invest between 15 uh, between 5 to 15% of their portfolios in Bitcoin and noted that sector was currently worth 100, twi 100 trillion, sorry, trillion. <laughs> That's a huge chunk. 15% of 100 trillion is 15 trillion. Imagine 15 trillion went into Bitcoin. Uh, and look, once 15 trillion goes into Bitcoin, there's going to be, you know, trillions that f uh, flood into the the altcoin market after that and you know watch the altcoins move again if they just get say maybe a third of that so they get five trillion into the altcoins that would be unbelievable you couldn't imagine how much some of those things would be worth so very very interesting now we all know that xrp has been on a massive pump i mean it did some ridiculous gains let's go over here so it was 119 percent so it doubled in seven days now this might have something to do with why if you haven't heard there's a spark token coming and it's an airdrop to anyone who holds uh, xrp and they've uh you know put in their claim for it uh i don't have any links to any videos that uh do it but just do spark token uh and have a look uh, and i highly recommend uh digital asset news his one uh that's where uh, i did mine I went off his video, so I highly recommend that. And his channel, it's a great channel. Uh, I watch it regularly. So XRP, you know, climbed 123%. I think a lot of it's got to do with the Spark token. People want free crypto. Now look, I regularly say there's no such thing as free crypto, and there really isn't, except for in circumstances like this. If you hold XRP, and there's a number of ex exchanges that are getting involved, so you can just have XRP on the exchange, and you'll get uh, your... Your Spark tokens, I don't highly recommend that, but it's probably the easiest way. But again, if not, go and check out the videos about how to claim your Spark tokens. But I definitely think this is part of the reason why it's pushed the price up so high. I mean, to double in a week, you know, that's some really, really big moves. Uh, every chance uh, both tokens uh, get sold off once the Spark tokens come out. Now, not completely sold off, but people will just want to take profits. For me, I'm holding, uh, you know, I'm not selling any XRP until, and again, it's not a whole lot. I'll just start to sell some at around about maybe $9, $10. Uh, there's a lot of talk that XRP goes to, you know, sort of $30. Look, if it goes to $30, then I'll obviously, you know, $20, I'll sell a little bit more. But I'm not looking to cash out. I'm holding my XRP long term. 
uh, you know, and I just believe in XRP. I believe in Bitcoin. I believe in Ethereum. I think all three of them are going to be around for a long, long time. I don't think they're going anywhere. So will I take some profits? Absolutely. Uh, will I be selling off, you know, most of them? No. I'll be keeping, you know, probably 50% or more long term. But I'll look to sell, you know, maybe 30%. And it won't be in one big massive hit. It'll be gradually. Again, sell a few at $9, sell a couple, you know, it's sort of, I don't know, let's say $17 and then sell a few at $25 and then sell a few if it hits 30, you know, and so on and so on. I mean, you know, obviously if it starts to pump up above $30, then I'll have made plenty of money by then already. I'll just simply hold and I'll be looking at $50 and then $100 and then, you know, $300 and so on and so on. Not that I believe XRP is going to those prices anytime soon, but it is possible that it could do that and it's just something you have to keep in mind and then you can you know focus on what your plan is and your strategy about you know whether you're going to cash out at all or you're just simply going to buy and hold for you know 10 or 20 years that you know that's a, that's a method that you know could pay off uh very well just you know the long-term viability uh of xrp is not really known yet Bitcoin's pretty solid, you know, it looks like it's a store of value and uh, is solid. XRP still needs to be adopted. It's not that it can't be used at the moment, but it needs adoption. So once it gets that clarity, uh, you know, from the SEC and things like that, then look, yeah, XRP 20 year hold, uh, that'd probably not be a bad idea. But again, nothing I say is financial advice. Please don't take it as that. Now, Stellar Lumens. Stella Lumens, very closely related to XRP. Uh, Jed McCaleb, he invented uh, both. Stella had a massive pump as well. And I think this might be the reason for it. So the launch of Stella's new protocol was received positively with the crypto market, including a 100% prize rise for XLM across the last 48 hours. The price of Stella Lumens shot up 64% in uh, the past 24 hours and crossed the 20 cent mark for the first time since September 2018. Stella's price action followed an announcement by the project's developer uh, that a new version of the Stella Public Network and Protocol had been implemented by validators. So they're still working on the Stella Network and this is what you want. You need to be able to hear about things like this happening and physically see it. Go to GitHub and check it all, you know, if you're really tech savvy and all the rest of it. But this means they're still developing, they're still moving. It's a live project. This is the kind of things that you want to invest in if you're going to put your money into something. Not something that, you know, you don't hear anything about, although it's not to say you can't, you know, get into things that are kind of dead projects that won't randomly have their pump. But I just, I wouldn't recommend doing that unless, you know, you've got a bit of experience and, yeah. Look, generally, I would say don't put your money into dead projects just hoping they'll pump. But, you know, this is crypto, it's in a bull market, pretty much everything pumps and we saw that over the last few days. But don't put your life savings into it and understand that if it pumps 20, 30%, you know, you should be taking profits of at least what you put in and then you just have your moon bag left for what happens after that, if you take that route. And please, I don't recommend it. That is a very risky route. But again, it's not that it can't pay off. It's just probably not smart. It's definitely not smart investing, let's put it that way. It may be, you know, it's not even smart uh, trading really, but you know, it's legit. I've done it before and you know, it can work, but yeah, my advice is just don't do it. I shouldn't have said anything, but anyway, I have now, so it's out there, what can I do? All right, so something really interesting though, is in October, Stella announced that the stablecoin USDC would be hosted on its blockchain at some point uh, in 2021. So next year, USDC is gonna be available on Stella. So again, it used to be just on uh, Ethereum. Ethereum's network was getting so banked up and it was mainly by the stable coins, USDC, USDT, and all the rest of it. So uh, Stella's coming. I'm pretty sure Algorand, uh, USDC is on Algorand as well. So there's some great projects out there. If you just get out there and do your research, you know, Twitter is, you know, be careful with Twitter. There's a lot of scams there and, you know, a lot of sort of, I wouldn't say fake news, but a lot of hypey news. But look, you go to the actual Stella uh, Twitter handle, they put out some good information there, like most of those do. Just be careful with what the influencers are telling you. And I know that's pretty rich considering I'm, uh, you know, a sort of an influencer, you know, working my way up to it. Again, don't just believe anything I say. You've got to get out there and get more than one opinion. You know, again, I watch plenty of other YouTubers 
uh, and not to copy their content or anything, but I just like to get their opinions as well because they've been in the space. I don't claim to be an oracle. I don't claim to know everything. I get my information from all sorts of places. Reading websites like this, watching other YouTubers, listening to podcasts, reading financial reports, you know, reading newspapers. Uh, again, you know, you take everything with a bit of a pinch and a grain of salt though. You know, everything's got its own bias to it. You need to take a whole collective of everything that's going on to make your own mind up. Yeah, don't believe just any one person. And, you know, financial advisors, and I'm not throwing shade on them, but it was not that long ago that you'd be hard up to find a financial advisor that would tell you to put your money into crypto. They would warn you against it. It's all a scam. It's this and that. And basically overnight now, I'm sure you'd be able to find a thousand uh, financial investors that would tell you to get into it. So they're not even that up to date sometimes. You really need to do your own homework. I wouldn't trust any one person with all my money. Back in the day, I would have. I've, you know, been around for a while and I've learned, you know, getting, you know, the average returns. And I put a tweet out a while ago and it was on one of my videos a while ago. If you don't want average returns, don't do what the average investor is because the average investor will get average returns. Now, it doesn't mean you go out and gamble and do the most risky thing out there. That's silly. But do your own research. Uh, and if you really understand how to do your own research, I can, you know, I won't say I guarantee because that may not be the case, but I'm confident that you're probably going to come up with a couple of things that are going to outperform what any regular financial investor would do. They'd just tell you to put your money in stocks and bonds and this and that. And look, once upon a time, that was the thing to do. Everyone was doing it, but it was making good money back in the day when it was early. And then the returns just got less and less and slower and slower and slower. And I'm sure at some stage in the future, Cryptocurrencies will probably become exactly the same, but that's a long way away. If you're here now, you're early, uh, there is you know, untold wealth to be found if you can do your research, you know, get into the right projects at the right times and things like that. So anyway, that was the stellar news. Uh, now, for all my Australian viewers, I don't even know if there are any Australian viewers, I haven't really checked where they're from, but I do have 78 subscribers, thank you very much. I appreciate that and you know if you're watching my videos hit those like buttons it helps my videos get out there and I really do appreciate it I put out daily content uh, you know I have missed one video once in the last I think six months as I've explained before you know I have a normal job uh, I have a family that I have to look after and things like that but I do my absolute best to make sure that I can get here uh, and you know provide whatever information and insight I can and that's all it is just a bit of insight uh, you know, I hate to go over it and say, you know, it's not financial advice, but it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't want you to think that I'm, uh, yeah, giving you financial advice. It's just my personal opinion and my insight into what's happening. And look, it's not always going to be about uh, cryptocurrencies. Every now and then, again, I talk about gold and other things, and we're going to have a talk about some other things very shortly. But moving on, Australian investment group with billions starts investing in Bitcoin futures. So he's basically taking the Paul Tudor Jones stance, uh, and, and that's fine, you know, taking cash. They're not really investing in Bitcoin. Uh, they're investing in the futures, and they get paid out in cash. That's not to say that's a, you know, a bad way to go, but me personally, uh, I wouldn't want just cash, but in saying they wouldn't want just Bitcoin either. Hence why I put my Bitcoin to work uh, over on BlockFi. There's a link down in my uh, description down below if you want to have a look at BlockFi, uh, and I receive uh, interest uh, in US dollars uh, in that. So, you know, I make my Bitcoin also make me uh, some cash. So when it goes down, I can take that cash and I can buy some more. But I haven't been using BlockFi for that long, so I don't have a lot of cash in there at the moment. But, you know, maybe one day in the future I will. But anyway, again, moving on, I'm getting sidetracked all the time. All the time. Pendle Group, an Australian securities exchange listed investment manager with over a hundred billion dollars, a hundred billion Australian dollars. So it's about 73.6 US uh, billion in assets under management is getting into Bitcoin. As reported by the Australian Financial Review on Monday, 
Vimal Gore, Pendle's head of uh, bond income and defensive strategies, said with the cryptocurrency entering the realm of mainstream, the company is now investing in Bitcoin futures on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So again, po uh, copied Paul to to Jones, Stan Druckenmiller and a whole lot of other people. I'm pretty sure Stan Druckenmiller is actually invested in Bitcoin though. I'm pretty sure he owns some himself uh, and his company was buying some and also, you know, getting into the... Oh God, what did we just call it? Uh, getting into the futures where they're getting paid out in cash. So look, I think that's a smart way. You want both coming in. You know, you want to have the actual hard asset itself and then you want to be making the cash from it as well. So when there are retracements, and look, at some stage they will come, you can use that cash to buy in uh, and, you know, buy other things as well. You know, that's just, you know, what I think anyway. Uh, you know, 1MJ's personal opinion. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, that's what some of you are here for. So that's kind of the news at the moment, but let's go over to CoinGecko. Now we'll refresh. Look, there has been a pullback. This was crazy. And over the last 24 hours, you know, since yesterday, things have slowed down a bit. That's to be expected. And look, it is possible that now Bitcoin starts to pump again and these really get drained. But the thing is, when these have their pumps, not all the time, but most of the time and for most of the good coins, you know, all this money gets pumped into them and they get pumped up. And then people will take out, you know, half to three quarters of the profits they've made. But every time they leave about a quarter of there, it's their moon bag. They, you know, they want to keep increasing their position in RP. So they chuck into RP, get the pump, take it out and go into cash or Bitcoin or something. And then they just repeat the cycle over and over again. If you can try and catch those, you know, and do some sort of day trading, swing trading, sweet. But what I don't like about it is it's hard to catch them sometimes, generally not too hard but still hard but so you're trying to catch those swings and then there's the fees that are going to get uh, chewed up from whatever exchange you're using and then also there's the taxes so for me I think it's just easier to invest I you know dollar cost average in I mean I built my positions in most of these things many months ago after the crash and since then I just dollar cost average a little bit but really I kind of I wait for dips to get back in it's not that I don't dollar cost average most of the time I do but sometimes I don't and I'm like no I'm just gonna hold my money this week or this fortnight and you know maybe I, I hold for three or four weeks the majority of it I still always put a little bit in but I'm just waiting for the big dips so let's have a recap 582 billion so it's still going up let's have a refresh see where it's at 585 right so it's moving we can see bitcoins moving up now again, there's a you know it's kind of stagnant now. The last 24 hours, Bitcoin's starting to move, so a lot of other things are kind of held off. Uh, XRP, you know, it pumped up, pulled back, and it's slowly pumping back up again. So gas prices 51, so a little bit steep, but again, they've been much worse. They were 270, 240, 300 and something, but Bitcoin dominance didn't that take a dip again? Everyone got in, you know, to the altcoins. They started to pump and now everyone's, you know, taking some profits uh, and probably start to put back into Bitcoin fairly soon. So Bitcoin will go on another move. But again, we have to just keep in the back of our minds, there could be a heavy retracement coming. And look, at some stage, there absolutely will. It's just hard to know when it's going to happen. And I think it's going to happen between twenty-five and $35,000 Bitcoin. I don't think it'll happen before then. I think there's just too much buying pressure. And again, once we actually go over that 19,600, 19,700, the old all-time high, you know, there's going to be more institutional FOMO that's going to move in. And particularly once we hit the, you know, $1 trillion market cap, uh, you know, in total for cryptocurrencies, there's going to be a lot of FOMO at that stage. And particularly if Bitcoin gets to a trillion dollar market cap, the retail foam, uh, the, the institutional FOMO uh, will grow even more. You know, there's going to be people who come really late to the party, even institutions. They just, they don't want to touch it. It's too small. It's too, you know, uh, hyper. It's all over the place, you know, massive swings up and down and all the rest of it. You know, once Bitcoin gets to a trillion or more uh, market cap just by itself, it will become a whole lot more stable. It won't be as volatile, you know, still volatile, but not you know, like it is right now. So, all right, let's have a look. What were the big movers, though, in the last 24 hours? Verge. Uh, finally, thank God, I got into Verge. I can't even remember the price, but it dropped to about 36% loss. 
and it really hurt. And now I'm finally in profit. I am thinking I'm probably going to take some of these profits and put it into uh, Bitcoin. We'll have to wait and see. I'm considering taking profits from a few different coins and putting them into Bitcoin, but I'm also considering I'm just letting them, uh, you know, ride. Because again, some money is going to come out of Verge very soon. I've got no doubt, but I think it will drop. Uh, you know, it, it's not going to lose basically everything that went back into it. It's just going to lose some of it. So we can see right there it's dipped down and it's starting to make its way back up again. So we'll just have to wait and see. But look, double digits, there was still some really good moves. Stellar again, still moving and still moving now. Zillica doing well. NEM, Horizon, Nano, look, tons of good movers. Uh, VeChain, again, well done. Uh, Engine Coin, thank God, that really hurt. I think I'm still a little bit in the minus uh, with Engine Coin at the moment, but I haven't checked. Kyber Network, uh, loving Kyber Network. Uh, you know, what I really love about Kyber Network is that if you stake it, they pay you back in ETH. So, yeah, I'm, I'm loving that. And it's just keeps coming in every, you know, week, fortnight, uh, you know, whatever it is that you're doing. I think it's every seven days you have to vote uh, and yeah, do your thing and then you get ETH back. So really, really good. Now, what about losses? It'd be hard to think there'd be some big losses, but I'm going to say there quite possibly is. Ah, actually, I'm wrong. There's not really too many big losses at all. Now, uh, Synthetics Network's really been uh, stuck around this $5 level. I think they're going to get a big massive pump at some stage. Aave's been coming down for a long time, uh, but again, it pumped really hard. So we'll have to wait and see if it's found its bottom yet. And again, Synthetics Network's has been around $5 for a very long time. Uh, and it didn't pump too much in this run. Don't get me wrong, it did pump a little bit but not like some of the other coins. But again, it pumped a little bit early, so then the profits were kind of taken back. We'll have to wait and see. But very, very minimal, you know, sort of losses here. They're single digits. You know, this almost gets to double digits, but everything else is, you know, basically low single digits. There's a couple of mid single digits, and then we're just going into low single digits. So we'll have to wait and see what's going to happen for the rest of the week. Obviously, the weekend's coming, uh, you know, Thursday's coming, and quite often there's a pullback, and they can start anywhere from sort of Thursday night and happen right through to Monday morning. It happens almost every single weekend. I don't see any major pullbacks happening. Again, I think there's just too much buyer enthusiasm at the moment. You know, retail, um, institutions are still getting in. Uh, you know, Sky Ridge, maybe they have or they haven't got in yet. I don't know. And there's others coming. Uh, yeah, I don't see any major pullbacks happening. But it is possible. So let's not just think that it's not going to happen. Now, let's go have a look at Bitcoin. As we can see has got on a bit of move and it's just flirting with its all-time high and again i've got its all-time high at about 19,600. i think it actually is about 19,640 something like that so it's very close we're just tipping on the edge here so we're waiting to see whether it's going to push over or maybe we do get that hard rejection you know time will tell but what i want to do is scale out a bit and have a look at this chart a lot of people have been saying uh Bitcoin has broken away from stocks. That's a very interesting thought. I'm not sure that it actually has. Now, don't get me wrong. The chart I'm going to show you in a minute, it's not exactly the same, but it's very similar. We can see here COVID happened. We had this big, pull, you know, sell-off. And then since there, we've just been on a, you know, quite a move. So remember this chart. And now let's have a look at this chart. This is the Dow Jones. Look at that. Fell off the cliff and then started to make its move back up. And it even has a bit of a Bart Simpson sort of uh, pattern here. Uh, a lot like Bitcoin, Bart Simpson. We had this move up, travel sideways. Bart Simpson had this move up, traveled sideways a little bit. Bart Simpson sort of thing. And then it's just started to push up there. So, you know, we're maybe not exactly the same as all stocks. But we're still fairly similar, you know, to the Dow Jones and the Dow Jones has reached new all time highs. So we just need to be careful. I mean, I mean, it sounds like there's more stimulus coming, which is great. So it'll push this higher, but we are still fairly correlated. We haven't really broken away as much as what people would like to think. So, you know, buyer beware is what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's going to crash or anything like that but we are still fairly in line with this. So if you know Dow Jones and stocks and all the rest of it take a big hit, uh, still very possible we do as well. Now gold, 
Gold is interesting. So it pushed up and it's just slowly been coming down. But what we can see is it's finding uh, a bit of support here at old sort of resistance. So as we can see, uh, it's a little bit above this. And uh, is this gonna go back far enough? Hopefully it will. Yep, there we go. So it's, you know, it's, there's a bit of confluence sort of around here. It's been here before and it's been both support and resistance. And then we come over here. Uh, here it was resistance. Now we're just hoping to see if it's support because it dipped down. And now we're just waiting to see if it's gonna bounce and come back. Because look, there is a lot of people taking money out of gold at the moment. Uh, and moving into Bitcoin, but not everyone, not all people in gold believe in Bitcoin. There's a lot of people that don't and they just think, you know, it's garbage and they're never going to get into it. So gold isn't going to just simply fall off a cliff. Uh, but, you know, it is possible maybe we come back down and test these kind of levels here. You know, unlikely, but who knows, you know, time will tell. All right. Um, what was the other one? Yes, XRP. So here we go. Look at the move that it had. It absolutely rocketed up and now we're just waiting to see is it going to come back here there's a little bit of confluence here so again it really uh, this become a bit of resistance a bit of support uh, support and resistance along here and now we just gotta come into here and have a look we can see it's wicked down to here and then push back up so are we you know is, are we gonna travel sideways here for a bit before we next make the next big move up because that's generally what it does when it makes these big moves and if we come back here we can see pumps up comes back down tests pumps up comes back down tests a little bit and then pumps way up and then it comes back down to basically test this line again uh, and it's done this a number of times now this time it didn't come back down to test this until way over here it took a long time for it to come back down and test this but we're waiting to see if history repeats itself with XRP. Now let's have a look at Ethereum. Ethereum is very interesting. So again, this is against BTC and so was that XRP, it was against BTC. We had this massive pump pulled back and it just seems to be finding support off here. Now we're still pulling back, of course we were going to. Some of that profit is being taken and being put into BTC and also in cash and you know who knows what else other small caps but we're waiting to see whether this will hold because we've been here before as we can see over here and over here and then if this one doesn't hold will this one hold and then if that doesn't hold are we going to come back to here and find some support uh, you know it, it's hard to know if Bitcoin gets on a roll then it's quite possible we really do break down into here. But, you know, no one knows. It's very hard to, uh, you know, predict. All you can do is just take a bit of a guess. And I'm thinking it's going to hold from here and I think it's going to start to move higher. But look, it is possible. And again, this is not against the dollar. So it's not losing against the dollar. It's just losing against Bitcoin. When it's red, it's being outperformed by Bitcoin. And when it's green, it's outperforming Bitcoin. That's how these charts work when they're go, going against BTC. All right, that's it from me. It's getting late here. So stay safe. Be kind to one another. Please hit that like button down below and that subscribe button. I pull out, I put out daily uh, information. Hopefully you're on that gain train and I'll see you next time.